You're listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me, your naturally platinum blonde pop culture connoisseur. I'm the reality TV junkie, self-improvement addict, and host with only the hottest tea spilled fresh weekly. For more hot takes, go and give me a follow at Just Plain Zach because I always keep it funny and I always keep it cute. And lately, I've been keeping it really vulnerable AF. Um, it's so weird saying naturally platinum blonde right now because my hair is brunette and that was a whole mission that we discussed earlier this week. I'm still getting used to it, but I'm not switching to naturally brunette pop culture connoisseur. I'll just say that. If you're like me and you want to stay up to date with the latest reality tea, go and give us a follow at No Filter with Zach on the Instagram, or you can always join our private Facebook group. The link is in the description below. I always give you guys a heads up of what what guests are going to come on. So you sent in a lot of questions for today's guests, a lot of questions. And I was really excited because a lot of them were my own personal questions. And now I can't wait to pick her brain. I'm just going to tell you right now, don't try today's guest because uh, she is no lazy mom. Um, and she is always spilling that tea on her YouTube series, Tea with Monique. Please welcome, formerly of The Real Housewives of Potomac, Miss Monique Samuels. Hello, hello. Look, that music had me ready for a race. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> We're partying here in the Zoom yeah. world. Zoom yes, boom. Yes, yes, Thanks for having me here today. I'm so- so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited to chat with you. I love the setup with the essential oils in the back. I can't wait to try this line. What is it? It's Mila Eve Essentials, right? Yes, Mila Eve Essentials, 100% pure therapeutic essential oils. You're only getting the best from me. <laughs> My mother is also no lazy mom, but she uh, she loved essential oils. So we, my brothers and I, like we have our diffusers. We're like, we're all about it. Yes, I love to hear that. It's amazing. And it's really life changing. When people really get into it, the reviews have been just through the roof. It's just unbelievable. And I'm so excited at how people, even the uh, the veteran oilers, when they try Mila Eve Essentials, they're just amazed at the quality. And then when they see the price, they're like, whoa, this is unbelievable. So I'm just happy to fill the void. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I have so many more questions about your essential oil lines, your your web, your parenting site, your your YouTube series. But before we dive into all of them, you have to answer my icebreaker questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So what? Uh, where did you grow up and what part of the world do you currently live in right now? I grew up in Atlantic City, New Jersey, um, in Pleasantville. A lot of people don't know Pleasantville, but it's right outside of, of Atlantic City. And I currently reside in Potomac, Maryland. Love it. What's yeah. one word your mom would use to describe you? Uh, loving. Hmm. My mom thinks I'm a sweetheart. <laughs> you are very loving until somebody crosses you, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Fun fact. What's one thing people would not expect about you? I am a fixer. I like to like I will I'm the person who like fixes the toilet and you know puts new toilet seats on. I'm the handyman woman around the house. I love it. See, I'm more of like a a, a metaphorical fixer. I want to fix life. I want to fix all the problems that come up and I want to fix all the the people's problems. Yes, me too. Don't That's give me you. a wrench though cuz I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> See, I like to do both, but I had to stop trying to fix people's lives because then their issues become your issues and then yep. it becomes a whole huge mess. So sometimes I just got to mind my business. It's really hard to do though. <laughs> I agree. What is your drink of choice? Oh, definitely Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Camus. And I've been drinking um, the dancing bear by cake bread, which is amazing uh, lately. So those are my favorite reds. Okay, I love it. Um, and last icebreaker question, which is my favorite to ask, if you had to be reincarnated as a Kardashian, which one would it be? Oh, I would probably be Chloe. She just seems like the most down to earth. She's very real, unfiltered um, as as the title. <laughs> yes, <laughs> no filter with her. So um, I would probably be Chloe. I love it. Okay, so we know you're not coming back to Real Housewives of Potomac, which we're all so heartbroken over. Um, But what can you give us a little update on what life has been like these past couple of months since you taped the reunion? Oh, man. Well, one thing about me, even before the show, I'm always nonstop. We always have something going on in the Samuels house. So I have projects for days. Now I feel like I'm more busy now than when I was a part of the show. And it's funny, Karen Huger actually reached out to me the other day and she's like, um, excuse me, I've been texting you and I have not heard from you. She said, I feel like I can't get a hold of you now. You're more busy now. And I said, you know what? I am. 
because now I'm really hands on and in, in deep into my Not For Lazy Moms uh, website. So I'm back to writing articles. I'm back to doing all of the things that I love to do that I didn't have time for because of filming and being a part of the whole Bravo franchise. They keep you really busy. So I'm enjoying doing that, being a mom, being a wife. Um, you know, I have T'Challa. So we're nonstop. And then Mila Eve Essentials, my YouTube channel. Um, we, we are not slowing down over here. <laughs> uh, how is T'Challa? Everybody loved him on the show. Yes, T'Challa's amazing. He's doing so well. He's just, he cracks me up. Um, he's still saying his name. It's like, he won't say anybody else's name. He just likes to say his name. And, um, and now he likes to say his name in our voices. So I'll catch him doing my son's voice or he loves my husband's voice. He does the deep T'Challa, you know, all the time. It's hilarious. <laughs> he hasn't run away recently, has he? No, thank God. He is, first of all, it's too cold. I doubt even if we, if I tried to bring him outside, he wouldn't want to because it's so cold. So he's been inside uh, solely. Um, I did bring him out. We had one day last week where it was like 70 degrees out of nowhere. So I put him on his leash and we went outside and we had a nice little um, outside, uh, just like 30 minutes and he got some fresh air. How did you feel when the other women questioned whether or not he actually ran away or that was you just trying to gain sympathy on Instagram? I wasn't surprised just because that's what they would do. Mm. So they, they think everything is just like about the show. And for me, I actually have a life. I'm an actual Potomac housewife. Um, so I don't have to do that much to have storyline, but they do. So for them, they are always trying to come up with some conniving way to be relevant. And unfortunately for me, I don't have to do that. My, I just live my life. Things happen. I share them as I always do on social media. And that was one of the things that it was a, really a cry for help. I really did not know what to do. I'm like, what do you do when your bird flies away? And thanks to that video and me going live that day, so many people gave me advice and different tips. They told me who to call. They told me to turn the music on that we normally listen to in the house on the outside speakers. They said, bring his cage outside, you know, whistle, call him. They gave me all the advice I needed and, and it worked. He came back the next day. I love it. I love that community that you can have on social media um, yeah. and how supportive people can be like, yeah, it comes with the nasty comments sometimes. But when you have that community of people that can like uplift you and you can uplift them, like it's just it's positive. It was it was so much love and I really appreciate it. And I mean, I had my cell phone number on flyers. Like I actually printed up a flyer with my cell phone number, posted them around the neighborhood and handed them out to every person I saw walking past. My husband was at Potomac Village Shopping Center handing out flyers with my personal cell phone number. I don't think anybody would do that yeah. for some fluke. Like, yeah. come on. So they, that was very insensitive and just, it just shows the real hate that the women have for me. And that just goes to show why I'm no longer there. <laughs> I'm over it. So talk me through that decision was because, you know, every time a housewife leaves, there's always like, was she fired? Did she really quit? And you said you got your contract and then you just ultimately decided not to come back. Was it because your relationships with women were so fractured or you were not happy with Bravo's edit of you this season? Like, what was that decision for you? So I was actually happy to come back for another season when they gave me the phone call they follow up with an email as they always do um solidifying and sending you your offer letter for the next season so i received all of that talked to them was excited when i got to watch the third part of the reunion that's when it hit me i'm not just fighting these women i'm also fighting production and the network when you get to that point where there's no respect from anybody and you feel like you're literally fighting everybody the women i can fight them all day long but when you're fighting the people who are controlling the narrative and the network that is producing and, and showing the show, that is when I knew I was like, my time is up here. I'm done. Why would I go back to that? Yeah. So I quickly said I, I was very unhappy with how they tried to spin the third part. There was so much that they left out. Um, I mean, I answered for so much for a good seven hours out of the 11 hours of filming. And they barely showed any of those responses. And then you get to the end and totally manipulate the whole story. You don't show Candace's live video where she actually admitted this whole plot. I saw that, I mean, yep. it was just, it was so much. And I said, you know what? I'm done fighting. I'm done. It's Why would I go back to this? This is just, it's mentally 
it's just not good when you have a whole network production and women gaslighting you. Yeah, you know? I mean, I was watching that third part of the reunion and I was kind of like, what am I watching? Well, especially, okay, so here's something that Chelsea Stark Jones wrote in for you. She said, the producers gave you a really bad edit during the reunion. Did Candace ever own up to her part in the fight? It felt like Andy really let her off the hook and it was also super frustrating at the reunion when everyone was saying that you were lying about what happened and then we get to the cut of the footage that proved that you were actually right. Exactly. And and imagine this for over a year, saying that same story, telling the same thing over a year and everyone from top all the way down the bottom telling you, no, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. And then they finally show it. What the heck type of mental effery is this? Um, but yeah, Candace never owned her part. She never apologized for her part. There was no accountability on her side at all. And no one tried to even push the accountability to happen. I mean, it was very one sided. Um, there was very, there was times when Andy asked certain questions of her, but he did it in such a gentle way that it was just like massaging you and just kind of coddling you to try to see if you'll own up. And then when you don't, then it's just like, oh, okay, let's move on to the next thing, you know? So, but with me, I mean, I was hammered the entire time to the point where when I did not show the emotion that they wanted to see, it was like, well, you're not emotional. Excuse me. This has been over a year. I've actually went through the process. I've been in therapy and everything else to deal with this. And I've put it behind me and I've moved on. So it was just, it was a mess. <laughs> Do you think that there's ever any mending for you and Candace? Or you think at this point, like, it's just nothing you're interested in? Oh, I'm not interested at all. Not at all. You, it, once you find out a person is a snake, you just let them be a snake and watch them slither and, and leave it alone. I feel like she'd played up the victim a lot more, which then made it easier for people to paint you as this cold, emotionless, non-remorseful person, which like, but it's so true because it's like you did process your, like this was a long, this didn't happen a couple of weeks ago. Like you had to go through that process of, of you know, making sense of what actually happened. And we did hear you actually apologize and own your part. In and I, I don't feel like there was any accountability on the other side. Right. And, and the, the funny thing is I've owned my part from the very beginning. I mean, even at that conversation at Karen's house, which I requested all the ladies to be there outside of Candace, um, even in that conversation, I own my part. I just didn't feel any remorse at that moment. I didn't have time to process it. So, and they weren't being understanding of that. And then when I finally did feel the point of being remorseful, then it's like, now she's trying to sue me and take my money and yeah. literally sends an email from her attorney saying that they will uh, pursue civil action if I don't respond to them. And then if I don't give them any money, then they're going to file a complaint. And that's exactly what they did. They weren't getting any money out of me. So they were like, okay, well, then we're going to take this to court for real, you know? So- yeah, it was just a whole nightmare. It was a lot. And um, if the cameras actually showed my process of dealing with all of that, see, every time I filmed, I mentioned the fact that she wanted money. I guess they didn't want that on the show. So there was a lot that was left out as far as what I contributed to the season after the fight happened. Um, so I, I could see why people had so many questions and they were just left puzzled. Like, wait, what's going on? Why is Monique not feeling remorseful? No, y'all... If y'all could have had cameras and the cameras actually showed everything that I went through, there would be a whole different story told for sure. How did you feel when Giselle showed up with her security guard? It was hilarious to me because I'm like, first of all, my husband's bigger than this dude. Do you really think he intimidates me? What are he going to do to me? Like, come on. Um, and it wasn't like I came in there ready to fight round two with the other ladies like that wasn't the point of me asking them to come there so I just felt like she was once again doing what she always does which is making everything about herself she has nothing else to talk about all she does is bring a new man every season we've seen it since season one so she has nothing else to do or talk about and she just had to do something to make it about her and and she, I guess she thought bringing a security guard uh would work <laughs> Well, CP wants to know, what are your thoughts on, on Jamal and Giselle now? Are they still together? And was it really all just for the show? It was definitely for the show. I have no idea what they're doing right now. I'm pretty sure he's still down there being passive, holy, Pastor Holy Whore, laying a pipe for all the ladies in the congregation down there still. I'm sure he's still up to no good doing what he always does. Uh, he's a whore of a pastor. And the people who follow him, they might want to just, you know, 
they might want to just like go to God themselves. <laughs> he did it. <laughs> he really, he tried to come for you too. What was it like on Instagram live? He was like calling you out because he didn't like that. You exposed his other relationships with other women. He basically confirmed everything that I said at the reunion. So that was nice. That was nice. <laughs> People know that the binder never lies. Speaking of which, binder time stories is coming soon. Ah. <laughs> it's going to be epic. Okay. So talk to me about the binder. What didn't we get to see? Because you said that you had a tab for everybody in it. So what yes. other like teasers from the binder can you spill? I will say this. I had a tab for myself. And a lot of what the ladies were trying to accuse me of, I had receipts, real actual receipts to show and prove what was going on in my life at different time periods. And it's just so funny to me because there was an ex-friend who comes along and starts these vicious rumors who has since retracted everything that she said. But of course, that doesn't make it to, to air. You know, they never want to show when the real truth comes out. They only want to show the nastiness of the lies. Um, but I was really dealing with some tough times early on in my pregnancy. I almost lost my child. So Chase, um, at eight weeks, I almost lost him. I was on bed rest for six to eight weeks. Um, I had to go get an, an ultrasound every two weeks for, what was it, two months? Um, because I almost lost my baby. So while they're steady making up lies and rumors, I'm actually at home with my family struggling, really dealing with like, am I going to miscarry again? So it, it was just a lot of um, just everything that I needed to back up with every everything that I was saying. Because one thing about those ladies, they will spill a bunch of stuff, but they can never back it up. Just ask yourself. We watched three parts of the reunion. Why wasn't the trainer brought up? Yeah, because they had nothing. They had nothing and nowhere to go with it. When Andy asked me, what did I think when Giselle brought up this whole trainer lie? I said I was relieved. I was relieved because the main concern for me was don't mention my child. Keep my child's name out of your mouth. But they didn't even show that part on the reunion because that was it was too good. It was too much truth. It wasn't enough nastiness. So they don't even show it. So you go the whole season talking about this whole trainer room and uh, trainer rumor and then you don't even address it at the reunion because they had nothing to back it up there was no proof there it was just rumors and speculation and gossip it was uh it was actually a story that was planted by an ex-friend of mine specifically to the cast of the show and the producers she literally reached out to every person on the show and production so that she could bring this story to tv it was literally for the show. It wasn't a rumor going around in Potomac. And even if it was, nobody would know on that show. None of them live here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I do want to ask you, because this was brought up a few times throughout the season, mostly by, I want to say Giselle, who was saying that she didn't want to, that there's, a, or I, I guess, and Candace, that there w there's this... Um, reputation of black women that they are very aggressive and that you fed into that stereotype and they didn't like how you know you by fighting with Candace you know in in their heads kind of made it made them all look bad what is your response to that they should look at their actions I mean some of these women are mothers and they're making them themselves look bad and showing bad examples for their children so if we want to talk about bad examples we need to talk about all of them the difference between me and them is that I can actually uh, take accountability <laughs> I can actually own up to being human and making yeah. mistakes and having uh, moments where there's a lapse of judgment and I wish I could have went back and used better judgment just like most people in the world so I am more relatable to the real struggles of human beings while they're trying to make themselves look perfect which we know isn't true um, you know, they should look more about being good role models for their own kids versus uh, worrying about what stereotypes people are playing into. Because I would hate for my children to watch me keep going back to a whore of a man who treats me with disrespect all for a show. And then you involve your children in that. That's why I left. Because at the end of the day, once you start trying to involve my children, my family into a reality TV show that they never signed up for, that's where I draw the line. My family is way more important than any show, any check that anybody can offer me. And I think that really speaks to your character because so many people stay because the paycheck is good or the publicity is good and they have, you know, national exposure. But when you choose to walk away the way you did and you're like, I'm good, I don't need, 
I don't need this paycheck. I don't need to put myself through this sort of drama and toxicity for the sake of what fame or money. You seem to be doing fine without the show right now. I'm doing better. <laughs> I I mean, the stress of it all. And you really don't even realize exactly how much weight and stress it is until you've removed yourself yeah. because you really don't get a break. You go from filming for four months. As soon as you wrap filming, now you're preparing to promote the next season. Now you're reliving it for, you know, 19, 20 weeks or more, um, watching it on TV, getting questioned about it, doing interviews. And then as soon as it wraps, you're back to filming again. It's never ending. So until you remove yourself, you sit back and you're like, whoa, I didn't even realize how much of a cloud was hanging over my head. So I feel absolutely amazing. I'm doing everything that I enjoy doing. I'm enjoying my family. They love that I'm not on the show anymore. My kids <laughs> love that I don't have to run out the house saying I'm filming, you know. So as they got older, they cared less and less about the cameras being there. So they they didn't even really want to film, you know. So I just, I feel really good. And I, it's just more solidified that my decision to walk away was the best one. How are your relationships now with Karen and Ashley? Have they improved or gotten more distant since you left? Oh, no, we're good. Yeah, I actually talked to Karen a few days ago. And Ashley, I've been texting and checking on her. She checks on me. Um, she just had the baby. So I'm sending her one of my, um, I actually have a Mila Eve Essentials kit that is for new moms and oh. I haven't even released it to the public yet, but I told Ashley, I was going to pack her one up and send it to her. So um, it's called new mommy, new baby. And it has essential oils that are good for the mom and the baby right after uh, childbirth. So, um, so yeah, but everybody is uh, we're doing good. I, I really enjoy, I feel like the relationship's even better because there's less strain for filming, you yeah. know, in our relationship. Now our, our friendship has just blossomed even more. Did you feel like Karen really was leaning more on your side? I know she tried to stay in the middle of it, but did you feel like she was taking more of your side or Candace's side at all? No, I definitely feel like she was definitely in the middle. She was stuck in the middle. And there were conversations that Karen and I had and we would go back and forth and I would give her my take on it. She would give me her take on it. Um, there was never a moment where she just felt like, I'm just going to side with Monique. It was her wanting both of us to be accountable for our actions. And you got to think when, when you're involved in an incident like that, things happen so quickly. You think you saw something and then you're trying to recall everything. I uh, was able to see all of the raw footage. The other women didn't, you know, it's outside of Candace. So they had to rely on their memory. And as soon as it happened, as soon as it was over, people were already saying things out of order. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, you can't you can't rely on your memory when something that fast happens. So. Um, so, yeah, she did her best to stay neutral. And I think she did a great job of it. And the women just gave her a hard time because I wasn't there to pick on. So they had to pick on somebody, you know. Were you expecting to run into any of the women at Karen's wig party or did you know you were going to be exiting before you had to see any of them? Absolutely knew I was not going to see any of them. If I were to see anyone, it would have been Ashley. But Ashley was like 45 minutes due to arrive after I was already leaving. So um, and she was the first one there. So there was a huge lapse of time before any of the women arrived. I actually went there way early in advance and I even talked to production and let them know I'm not playing around. I'm not trying to see any of these ladies. You know, I'm going to go in. I'm going to see my girl and support her. And then I'm leaving. And I had a charity event that night anyway. So, um, so yeah, there was no possible way we would have seen each other. I wouldn't have loved. Well, because editing made it look like Candace got there just a few minutes after you had left. Yeah, no, that definitely didn't happen. <laughs> um, Ashley was there first. Um, Ashley got there about 45 minutes after I left. She was the first person there. Interesting. So, yeah. Yeah, I think Karen really was just trying to to not not necessarily just stay neutral but trying to be supportive of each of you guys. And I feel like you gave her permission or you just gave her space to be Candace's friend as well whereas I feel like the other women were very much putting her in the corner and wanting her to like make a decision. Right. I acted like a mature adult. <laughs> <laughs> who is not trying to control Karen's actions and control what she does and trying to get her to be on this team of uh, people against Monique, you know? So I, I didn't agree with what Candace did. And I felt like she definitely had a part 
And there was times where Karen and I had discussions about that and maybe she didn't agree with me. But the point is, she's a grown woman. I'm mm-hmm. a grown woman. I am in no way, shape or form going to force somebody to not be friends with somebody simply because I don't want them to take sides. That's what children do. Were you glad that Juan Dixon wasn't here at the reunion? I'm just trying to figure out what he was supposed to do if he was there. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was no point in that comment. That was probably the most hilarious moment where Robin was just like, you know what? Nobody is talking about me. Let me just spill something out. <laughs> oh, my God. It was hilarious. Nobody was even talking to her. <laughs> Do you see any mending with Robin or Giselle? No, I could care less about ever seeing him again in life. <laughs> Did you have a tab on Robin and, and Juan Dixon? Absolutely. What were, because what was, um, Michael Darby was talking about how he didn't think that Juan would actually propose to Robin. Do you think that their mending and their engagement was genuine? Or do you think that that was similar to Giselle only for the show? I definitely think it was for the show. (laughs) I heard there were some ultimatums that, uh, uh, you know, I heard through the grapevine that there were some ultimatums given to her. And her whole situation, you know, they want that money to keep coming in. So they got to do what they got to do. But I hear they have some taxes they have to pay back. You know, they got to pay them taxes. They got to make it to season six now. (laughs) (laughs) Have you heard anything about production for the next season? Or you've just totally been out of that loop? No, totally out the loop and and grateful for it. Um, uh, Kanucky Nat on Instagram wants to know if you'd ever consider doing a series about you and your family. Um, I, I would consider it. It just depends on what, it depends on the network. It depends on the production company. It depends on what the situation is. And, um, I would be open for it. But one thing I do know with just being on a reality show, it's work. And I don't, I don't like the idea of turning my family into a business. So it would just depend on how much of our time it will require throughout the year. Like how, how long are we filming? You know, how much do you need to see my kids? What kind of interactions are you trying to to capture? So it really just depends on the situation and, you know, I'm open to it, but I'm not like in a rush or a hurry or even looking right now. (laughs) Holly Brocky, so reality TV is, I guess, off off the table for you moving forward, or would you even do like a marriage boot camp or like one of those like one season shows? Uh, probably not. Probably yeah. not. I'm good. I'm good. I'm grateful for the platform, and I appreciate what reality TV has done for me. But um, I think I'm good. I think I'm good on that. <laughs> I can respect that. That's not an, it's not a platform people walk away from easily. And if you can walk away and hold your head up, then I think that says a lot about you. Um, Holly Brocky uh, just wants to let you know that she's really bummed that you're still not coming back. And she wants to know if there's any other housewives show that you watch and which housewife is your favorite. Okay. So uh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And um, since the reunion, I'm going to be 100 with you. I watched the first episode of Real Housewives of Atlanta and I've not watched Bravo since like at all. So, um, literally hasn't even been on my TV and I've not had, honestly, I've not had time to watch. So anything that I have been catching up has just been with what I see on Instagram when people are posting their opinions and things like that about the shows. Um, I've been, uh, I just, I've been, I've been busy. So I haven't even had time to watch TV really. My favorite housewife is def- definitely Portia. Love Portia. <laughs> That's my girl. Um, so yeah, other than that, you know. How do you feel like, how do you feel about Portia being in the hot seat right now with the, the rumors that she had a threesome with the stripper on the show? Well, with one thing about Portia, she's a grown behind woman. <laughs> she was single at the time. If she had done it, she would admit it. There would be no reason for her to lie. She has nothing to prove to anybody. And another thing I know about Portia is that she can handle the heat. So um, people can say whatever they want. She knows her truth. And, you know, that's my girl. I always, I will always 100% have her back. I'm here for her. If she wanted to do whatever she wanted to do, look, she's grown. She can do it. If she says she didn't do it, she didn't do it. (laughs) I, I, I mean... 
I guess as a viewer, it's easy to 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 fall into like the tea and the juice of the storyline. But I mean, I guess at this point, like what what reason does she have to lie about it at this point? Right. And also, you got to remember, too, when you're watching these shows, and I think that's probably why I look at it differently, because I know what happens behind the scenes. I know what they will go through in order to make a story look like something more, you know, um, so I just I, I don't fall for it anymore. It kind of makes it a little hard to watch reality TV, having been on reality TV, because I can already see the parts where I'm like, oh, yeah, producer probably asked her to, you know, prompted that question or, you know, oh, they probably left out a whole hour and changed the timestamp. And, you know, there's so much that can happen, you know, Bolo driving away and it says whatever timestamp, it could have been a random car pulling off and they're making it look like it was like you, it's so much trickery. I just can't fall for it. J Denny 2030 wants to know, I guess you kind of already answered this, but she wants to know if you would ever consider coming back to Real Housewives of Potomac, maybe even in a cameo or something moving forward. Absolutely not. (laughs) Not even like a lunch Uh, with Karen. No, I told Karen and Ashley um, respectfully, if they have events that are really important, but the cameras are going to be there, I'm going to have to respectfully decline and I will send them my well wishes, but I I would, I would never be back on that network. Um, I'm good. I just, I, I've, I've, I'm totally turned off. You know, when you see how people will go through so much just to destroy a family um, and then to back that and to not even try to show a smidget of the truth, to me, that agenda right there just makes me feel like completely turned off. It just puts a bad taste in my mouth and I, I don't want any parts of it. I'm good. Good for you. <laughs> Did you hear the rumors and do you have any opinion on the blog sphere is saying that part of the reason there was that um, that little tiff at the engagement party what, between Michael Darby and um, Juan Dixon was because Michael might have a crush on Juan? No, that's not what it is. You got to understand these guys hang out yeah. off camera. So I'm pretty sure there was some tea that Michael maybe wanted to spill and maybe just reserve that. <laughs> so we never know what's really going on, but um, they they tried to, they've been trying this whole narrative with Michael as if Michael is gay or bisexual for years. So of course they're going to keep trying to play into that. So when they're having these side conversations, of course they're going to try to make it seem like it's the narrative that they've been trying to prove since the beginning. So like I said, I don't, I don't fall for it. I know too much that happens behind the scenes and I'm going to keep my mouth closed on that. (laughs) (laughs) So what's, what's next for you, Monique? Do you have any, I mean, obviously you have your businesses, but is there anything else on the horizon? Maybe more additions to your family or I hope not. I hope Chris didn't knock me up. <laughs> um, listen, I just told my husband, this is the longest since we've had our first pregnancy with my oldest son. This is the longest I've gone without being pregnant since. So I want to keep on this streak. My body's finally figuring it out. It's getting back to normal and I feel good. And, you know, but right now I've just been working on my binder time stories and it's going to be something different than what people are even expecting. They're just expecting, oh, she's just going to read from her binder or, oh, why, you know, the binder happened so long ago. Give it up. This is going to be storytelling on a level that people, especially my age group can relate to because we grew up off story tales. And it's literally like a nursery rhyme for adults. It's hilarious. It's very witty. Um, the theatrics of it all. It's just, it's going to be just a fun little, you know, session. And it's its going to be good. I can't wait. It's going to be three parts. I'm going to release it on my uh, Tea with Monique YouTube channel. So everybody listening, make sure you're subscribed to Tea with Monique. I'm actually going to do our early uh, preview on my Patreon account. So if people want to sign up and subscribe to that, they can watch it before everybody else. (laughs) I love it. So I have had a very stressful couple of months. Do you have any recommendations for essential oils that I should be taking right now? Absolutely. So one thing I always say for stress is better sleep. 
Mm. And the one thing you're going to do and get from using essential oils, when you use it, especially with a diffuser, you get better sleep. When you have that diffuser running, you can have anything. We have an oil called sleep tight. I like to blend my oils. So I'll mix a little sleep tight with some eucalyptus and something that opens up the airways, add a little extra lavender into it. It really relaxes you. You're breathing it in while you're asleep. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory. So it's, it's giving your airways more room to breathe. And it puts you into that REM sleep faster. Most times it takes four hours to get there. When you're using essential oils and you're diffusing them, you're putting them on your shoulders and you're getting yourself ready for the night. Um, you can use some of the massage oil on your feet, your neck and your shoulders. Turn that diffuser on. When you close your eyes, you're going to hit that REM sleep probably in a good 30, 40 minutes. And you sleep so much better. You'll find yourself waking up before your alarm goes off. And you'll find yourself feeling less stressed because your body was able to really get into that deep sleep and require, and it gets the healing that it requires while you're sleeping. Um, we have other oils that you can use throughout the day. Grapefruit is amazing for stress. It is a mood booster. It smells amazing. Any citrusy oils usually will uplift you. I love citrusy um, have, smells. Oh my God. We have an oil called anti-stress. Um, and I use that on my forehead. You can use it without even diluting. It depends on your skin sensitivity. But I put a drop right on my forehead. I put it on the back of my neck and I get my day going. We have another oil, which is my son, my eight-year-old son's favorite. It's called Mind Over Matter. And he loves it. Whenever he gets frustrated with his schoolwork, um, he'll say, mommy, where's the Mind Over Matter? And I'll say, it's on, my, it's, on the, you know, it's on the counter in my bathroom. He'll go get it, put it on his forehead and the back of his neck. Within 10 minutes, he's like, I feel so much better. He said, mommy, I swear your oils really work. <laughs> Aww. Yes, it's amazing. So if the kids I'm are saying that. that the kids are honest, if the kids didn't believe it, they'd be like, mama, that doesn't work. But if they, yeah. if he's saying that it works, then, you know, kids don't lie. Oh yes. They will tell you the truth. My son was, um, my youngest, he's two. He was outside playing for two days. So I guess his allergies started acting up a little bit and he probably had like a sinus headache. And I, he kept being really fussy. So I said, you know what? I have this oil. It's called Head Aid. I put some of that on his forehead and on the back of his neck. Within about 15 minutes, he's back to his normal happy self. This little boy, I wish I could have caught this on video. He said, mommy, oil's good. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my yeah. husband fell out laughing because it's like he even realized that, whoa, I feel better. And the last thing mommy did was put that oil on my head. It's amazing. It's amazing. The kids definitely pick up on it. I love it. Any new music on the horizon for you? I'm waiting for Ashley to get her whole postpartum situation together. I already sent her an idea for a song. I sent her the music for it. And we said we're going to do something together. So, yes, this is going to be a good one. I love it. Yes. Where? <laughs> so, you, I mean, you've sold me on these essential oils. Where can people go and order them right now? And are they available nationwide? Yes, they're available nationwide. We've shipped orders everywhere, Canada to the UK, um, everywhere. So they're available everywhere. You can go to shopmilaeve.com. Um, Mila is M-I-L-A, E-V-E. -E. So shopmilaeve.com. Uh, we have new oils coming out all the time. We have a total of, right now, we have a total of, uh, let's see, 53 oils in wow. our inventory. So there's 53 different scents and aromas. We have bath salts. We have diffusers. We have um, carrier oils, fractionated coconut, almond, grapeseed, jojoba. We have everything you need. So, and, and for people, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I would love to use the bath salts, but I don't have a tub. There's a lot of people that just have showers, stand in showers these days. So the bath salts are actually really good for hand and foot scrubs as well. Mm. So um, there, there's many uses for everything. And we, we have you covered. You can go on our website type in whatever you're looking for as far as like you can type in stress all the oils and, and everything in our inventory that is stress related will will populate into your search and then you can kind of choose from there so it's it's really good oh, well i'm excited to go place my order so you have mila eve essentials you have your youtube channel tea with monique i can't wait for all these binder stories that you're about to be spilling yes, and then you really and then you have Not For Lazy Moms, your website. Is there anything else? I mean, you you really are so busy right now. Yeah, we keep it busy. And Not For Lazy Moms, we have the podcast and we also have a YouTube channel as well. So we're always doing new um, how-to videos. I'm, I'm still writing articles and we're still uh, releasing podcasts. So 
Our podcasts are available on every major um, uh, platform, not for lazy moms. And we actually talk about more than just parenthood and relationships. We actually are doing a whole series on generational wealth, which mm. has been amazing. We're talking about estate planning 101, business development, branding, um, everything you can think of in terms of just trying to create that wealth for you and your family to come. Uh, we're talking about all of it, just finances, saving your money, how to manage your money. So it's been really good. We have some good lifestyle topics that we discuss on our podcast as well. Um, I'm probably going to have to be listening into that soon. <laughs> yes. Yes. You spilling some tea? What you got going on? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You never know. My mom's been pressuring me. Um, but thank you so much, Monique, for, for chatting with me today. Everyone needs to check out Mila Eve Essentials. Go listen to the Not For Lazy Moms blog and the site. And please, if you're watching this on YouTube, which I know most of you are, Tea With Monique, go subscribe right now because she's going to be spilling that tea. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And Monique, where can people follow you on Instagram? Instagram, it's Mrs. Monique Samuels. So, and uh, we have Instagrams for every every company and you'll see them linked right in my profile as well. I love it. You guys can follow me at Just Plain Zach. Don't forget to follow the show at No Filter with Zach. And let me know what you thought of this week's interview. Did Monique spill enough tea? Or should we go to her YouTube channel and ask her a lot more questions for more tea? I feel like there's more to be... There's more to be spilled in there. Um, but thank you guys for listening to Hashtag No Fields with Zach Peter. Don't forget to catch our news recaps on Mondays and our unfiltered interviews on Wednesdays. Available on all podcast platforms, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. If you have a Roku device, you can watch the show on there or you can always watch it at youtube.com slash Zach. Thank you guys. Please go leave me a five-star review because I need that validation. Okay, bye.